I'm going to present the paper, Online Primal Do Meets Online Matching with Stochastic Rewards, Configuration LP to the Rescuer. My name is Chen Kun Zhang from the University of Hong Kong, and this is a joint work with Zhi Yi Huang. Let me first introduce the classical online bipartisan matching model, which was first introduced by Kapp, Vazirani, and Vazirani in 1990. The model gives a bipartisan graph G with vertices sets U and V and an edge set E. Vertices in U are known upfront, and the vertices in V arrive one by one. When an online vertex V arrives, its adjacent edges are reviewed, and we must then match it to one of its neighbor. The goal is to maximize the cardinality. Here is an instance with four offline vertices U1 to U4. When the first online vertex V1 arrives, Assume that we match it to U3, and then V2 has only one neighbor U4. V3 have, has only one neighbor U2. Then when the last vertex V4 arrives, because both of its neighbors has been matched, so we must leave V4 unmatched. The benchmark is defined as the optimal cardinality on the instance where all vertices are known upfront. So the competitive ratio in this instance is 3 over 4. We study a variant of online bipartisan matching called online matching with stochastic rewards, which was first introduced by Maita and Pani Grahi in 2012. The model is motivated by the online advertising platform. The offline vertices represent advertisers and the online vertices represent the users. The users may click the ads with a certain probability and the advertisers pay only if the users click the ads. Let me give the formal definition. The model also gives the bipartite graph G with offline and online vertices. The difference is that each edge UV is associated with the success probability PUV. When an online vertex arrives, its adjacent edges are reviewed as well as the success probabilities. When we match it to one of its neighbor U, U will succeed with probability PUV. It fails you can still be available for later online verses. And the goal becomes to maximize the number of successful offline verses. Note that the event that U succeeds with PUV is independent of whether previous ages are successful. Here is an instance with four offline verses U1 to U4. When the first online vertex V1 arrives, it has three neighbors with success probabilities P1, P2, and P3. Assume we match it to U3, then U3 will succeed with P2. Assume that it fails in this round. Then when the second vertex V2 arrives, because U3 is not successful in last round, V2 can still be matched to U3 and U3 will succeed with P4 in this round. Assume U3 succeeds in this round. So when next vertex V3 arrives, it has only one unsuccessful neighbor U4. Assume U4 succeeds in this round. Then the last vertex V4 arrives because both of its neighbor have been successful we must leave V4 unmatched. And the number of su successful offline verses is two in this instance. Our work will focus on the validation probability case when P tends to zero, which has been the focal point in the previous work. In this case, Meta and Panigrahi considered two alternative viewpoints of the model. The first is that if we define the load LU of an offline vertex U 
as the sum of success probabilities of ages matched to you. They first argue that the, to maximize the expected number of successful offline vertices equals to maximize the expected total loads of offline vertices. Secondly, the stochastic rewards model can be reduced to stochastic budgets model when p tends to zero. In the stochastic budgets model, at the beginning, each offline vertex u independently draws a random threshold theta u from the exponential distribution with mean one. And then u succeeds at the moment its load exceeds the threshold. Note that the threshold is not realized until load exceeds it. The algorithms in the previous work consider two cases depending on whether all the success probabilities are equal. For the unequal probability case, Meta and Panigrahi proposed an algorithm called stochastic balance which matches each online vertex to one of the unsuccessful neighbors with the least load or the fewest attempts. They proved that the stochastic balance is 0 0.567 competitive. For the unequal probability case, Meta, Wagner, and the Zadi Morgan proposed a 0 0.534 competitive algorithm called semi adaptive in 2015. Here comes our result. For the equal probability case, we proved that the stochastic balance is at least 0 0.576 competitive. And for the unequal probability case, we propose a new randomized algorithm that is 0 0.572 competitive. Finally, our results can be generalized to vertex weighting model. Our analysis is based on the randomized primal due framework, which was first introduced by Davenu, Klingberg, and Jane in 2013. In the previous work using this framework, they all consider standard matching LP the standard LP takes the decision variable xuv on each edge uv, and accordingly, there is a due constraint on each edge. However, we find that it fails to give any compatibility ratio better than the trivial 0.5. Our solution is to use the configuration LP as benchmark. Instead of taking variables on edges, the configuration LP takes a decision variable XUS on each offline vertex U and the subset of its neighbor S to represent the probability that S is matched to U. The change of the decision variables lead to the change of due constraints. This allows for an implicit amortization among vertices in S. I will then explain how we do the do ex assignment. We set the primal variables according to the matching decision. That is, if v is matched to u, we set x u v as one. We do the do initialization by set alpha u and the beta v as zero. The do assignment is a process of gain sharing. That is, if we match it to u, we set the gain of p based on the current load of u l u and the non-decreasing function f. That is, we increase alpha u by p times f l u and we set beta v as p times one minus f l u. By doing so, primal equals two in every round. The primal feasibility holds by definition and to get a, a compatible ratio of gamma, we need to ensure that for each offline vertex u and the subset of its neighbor s, alpha u plus the sum of beta v in s is greater than gamma times pus. Because of the randomness of the threshold theta u, 
alpha u and beta v are both variables, random variables. So it's sufficient to show the due feasibility constraint in expectation. I will then explain how to ensure the due feasibility constraint in details. First, fix the threshold of all other offline vertices and define the LU infinity as the load of U when threshold equals to infinity, that is all matchings to U fail. We consider the different cases depending on whether theta U is greater than LU infinity. First, if theta U is greater than LU infinity, the load of U is LU infinity by definition, and all the neighbors of U, including vertices in S, are matched to an offline vertex with load at most L infinity, because the algorithm always matches V to a neighbor with least load. Then we can calculate the value of alpha U and the lower bound of sum of beta V in S. Then, if theta U is no greater than L infinity, we suppose that theta u equals to L infinity minus i times p, which means that threshold can no longer accommodate the last i vertices that were matched to u. In this situation, the load of u is theta u by definition, and our key argument is that all vertices in S except i of them are matched to an offline vertex with load at most L infinity. I will explain this in more details later. Then we can calculate the gain correspondingly. So why the argument is true, let's consider how the matching process changes from theta u equals to L infinity to L infinity minus p. The offline vertex can be viewed as being split to some matching slots, and each online vertex will be matched to one of them. So if, L, if theta u equals to L infinity, there are L infinity slots, and if theta u changes to L infinity minus p, there is one slot less. Assume that V star is matched to the slot L infinity minus P before theta U decreases. Then, because the slot L infinity minus P disappear, V star will be matched to another slot U1 L1. But this slot may be occupied by another online vertex V1 before theta U decreases. So after theta U decreases, V1 has to match to another slot U2, L2. This process will trigger an alternating path. Because the stochastic algorithm, the stochastic balance algorithm always matches to a neighbor with least load, so the load of each offline slot is long decreasing. And as a result, at most one online vertex, will be matched to an offline slot with load changing from less than L infinity to greater than L infinity. At last, we calculate the expected gain from alpha u and the sum of beta v in S, which consists of two parts. When theta u is greater than L infinity and theta u is no greater than L infinity, Then, the due feasibility now boils down to a solving a standard differential inequality, solving which gives the optimal choice of f and the desired competitive ratio. For the unequal probability case, unfortunately, the alternating path argument fails. I will explain this with an instance. Consider V star is matched to U with probability P U V star equals to P, and assume it is matched to slot theta U minus P. If the threshold of U decreases and the slot theta U minus P disappears, 
V star may be matched to another offline vertex U prime with success probability P U prime V star equals to two P. But these two slots of U prime may be occupied by another two vertex V prime, V double prime already before theta U decreases. So V prime and V double prime may be matched to other offline vertices with probability P uh, two P with the process repeating number of vertices as well as the sum of success probabilities grow exponentially. So the cascading effect cannot be bounded. And our approach for an equal probability case consists of two parts. First, we prove that by a sequence of reductions, it suffices to consider a easier fractional problem such that if there is a deterministic online algorithm that is gamma competitive, there is a, a randomized online algorithm that is gamma competitive for online matching with stochastic rewards. The algorithm for the fractional stochastic budget problem is driven by the randomized prime module framework, that is to continuously match infinitesimal fractions of V to the offline neighbor with the largest P times one minus FLU, that is to maximize the gain of beta V. Instead of the, auto, the alternating path argument, we find a set of invariants that are more robust Concretely, fix the threshold of all other offline vertices and consider the threshold of U decreases from theta U to theta U prime. In the offline side, while the load of U may decreases, the load of any other online vertices U prime will weakly increase at any given moment. This invariant leads to an online invariant that is due gains of any online vertex weekly increases because of F is non-decreasing. By these two invariants, we can bound the loss of beta V in S when CTU decreases. The lower bound of the expected gain from the sum of beta V in S is weaker than the equal probability case which leads to the smaller competitive ratio. So at last, I make a summary of our results. For the online matching with stochastic rewards problem itself, we study it under validating probability assumption. For equal probability case, we improve the previous bound for stochastic balance by an improved charging argument. For unequal probability case, we first investigate that the original problem can be reduced to an easier fractional one and design a new primal due algorithm for the fractional problem. By invest, investigating two invariants to control the loss of beta V in S while theta U decreases, we get a competitive ratio better than before. Finally, in the algorithmic aspect, we first proceed randomize the primal due framework using configuration LP instead of standard LP and leaving an evidence to show that configuration LP may be more powerful in the analysis of some matching problems. I also list some possible future directions here for reference. For the online matching with stochastic rewards problem itself, even for the case of equal probabilities, the optimal achievable compatibility ratio is unknown. And till now, there is little work dealing with the case where probabilities are not vanishing. And for the online primal due framework, there may be other matching problems can benefit from the analysis using configuration LP. That's all my presentation, thank you.